This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 36, Dealing with Fatigue and Discouragement. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you attract and retain business through the power of quality content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is September 12th, 2013. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining us today for episode 36 of the Content Marketing Podcast. Just a reminder, we are live on iTunes and on Stitcher, so if you're listening to this episode on the blog, you can click on over and subscribe. That means you'll get new episodes automatically delivered to your computer or your smartphone or your listening device of choice. And if you use a different app for your podcast listening pleasure, we also have an RSS feed, and I will provide that link to you in the blog post. Last week, we talked about dealing with feedback, those comments on your blog, posts on your Facebook page, maybe emails you receive about your uh, white paper or your e-newsletter, things like that. So if you happen to miss that episode, please feel free to click on over to iTunes or Stitcher or to the RSS feed and get all caught up. Before I move on to today's topic, I want to talk about some coming attractions here on the podcast. You know, there are some fantastic books coming out this fall, and we're going to be bringing you a lot of those authors right here on the Content Marketing Podcast. Next week, we're going to be talking with Todd Henry of The Accidental Creative. He'll be discussing his new book, Die Empty, Unleash Your Best Work Every Day. In October, we'll be talking to Joe Polizzi, who will be a very familiar name to those of you who follow the Content Marketing Institute, he'll be talking about his new book, Epic Content Marketing. And in November, we are very excited to be welcoming Gary Vaynerchuk. He's got a new book coming out called Jab, Jab, Right Hook, and he will be joining us to talk about that. So lots and lots of exciting stuff coming up. But for this week, at least, you are stuck with me. And today I'm going to be talking about dealing with fatigue and discouragement. No doubt about it, content marketing is a creative endeavor. And usually when we think about creatives, we think about the artist painting in her studio or maybe a novelist working on character development or an actor or dancer in the studio working on their craft. But really... You know, a corporate marketing specialist who is sitting in a high-rise building working on a blog post is no less of a creative than those folks I just mentioned. Um, it's all about taking an idea and turning it into something of value, something that's consumable, something that's tangible for your audience. So whether your medium is the written word or video or audio or images, all of us who have signed on to this content marketing thing are creatives. And the thing about creative work is that it really goes in a smooth, stable, straight line. There are highs and there are definitely lows along, along the way that we have to deal with. You know, sometimes you're in the zone, you're feeling great. You can't wait to sit down every day and work on producing some great stuff. You're feeling wonderful. And then there are some other times. And today I want to talk about those other times. Specifically, two of the potential blocks that we deal with during those low periods, which are fatigue and discouragement. Now, just as a, an aside, I want to make sure you understand I'm not talking about depression. Depression is a medical condition, and if you are dealing with it or think you might be dealing with I really hope that you will turn this podcast off and go talk to your doctor because very, very serious and very separate issue. But today we're talking about the fatigue and discouragement that we all experience at some point in our content marketing journey. So I want to talk about what those are as I describe them, what those two phenomenon really mean, and then we'll talk about about some coping strategies to help you push through those low points so that we can stay on track and keep producing great work on a regular basis. So the first block I want to talk about is fatigue. And fatigue is just 
it's just tiredness. It's when you're tired of doing the work. And back in the 80s, there was a TV commercial for Dunkin' Donuts. Um, those of you who are old enough to remember, I'm sure you'll recall uh, Joe the Baker. He would The clips would show him rolling out of bed at some ungodly hour. And he would be repeating the mantra, time to make the donuts. And, um, and sometimes it's like that with us. You know, we sit down, it's time to write the blog post or time to shoot the video or um, sorry, I've got a pug playing in the background. <laughs> or um, you know, it's and it sometimes it feels like a drudgery week after week, month after month, working on these on these content pieces. Sometimes it's really hard to get enthusiastic about it. And I'm not so much talking about coming up with ideas. Um, Hopefully you've got your editorial calendar in place to have those ideas lined up when you're ready to work on them. But it's more a matter of the process of taking that idea and turning it into a content asset. Now, as we know, this content marketing thing is a marathon and not a sprint. And it is so different from traditional marketing. Those days when you just put all your creative and your best efforts into a campaign and you worked like crazy for a few weeks and then you launched it and you put that campaign out there and then you sat back and reaped the results. Uh, this is not like that. You know, as soon as we get a piece out there, we need to start working on the next one. Sophie, please be quiet. We start off so enthusiastic. We're full of ideas. We've got um, enthusiasm and we're, we're just pumped and we're ready to get started. And then six, seven, eight months later, uh, it can be really, really hard to get motivated to work on, on what we've committed to working on. Um, and, and when I was working on this section of the of the script of the show notes, I really tried to find some statistics out there about the number of abandoned blogs, and I can't find any of the, any. I think it's really hard to to measure, but I'm sure there are. They've got a number in the millions. The number of blogs, and I mean you know business blogs, content marketing blogs that businesses have started and just abandoned and. Another example, I'm sure if you cruise through iTunes, you'll find it is littered with abandoned podcasts. And there's a reason for all that, and that is keeping this up is freaking hard. <laughs> and when that when that fatigue sets in, not everybody is able to push through it and keep going. So that's why we have abandoned blogs and podcasts. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about fatigue. The other block I want to talk about is discouragement. And discouragement, while fatigue is kind of just being tired of working on the stuff, discouragement is not feeling great about the work itself. And I see discouragement as a two-sided coin. Um, one side of the coin is, I suck. And the other side of the coin is, what's the point? Um, either we're, we're feeling bad about ourselves as creatives, about what we're doing, or we're feeling bad about the results that we're getting. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a horrible, horrible habit of comparing myself to other people. It's one of my worst character flaws. And I know it doesn't make sense. I know each of us has our own road to tread and that everybody is different. But I will see, for example, I'll see a great piece of content that someone has put out there, a great blog post or a beautiful infographic or hear a great podcast. And instead of just appreciating it for the wonderful work it is, my mind immediately goes to getting down on myself saying, oh, wow, I can never write something that good. Or, you know, I wish I could do infographics like that. And it's, it's terrible and it's destructive and there's no reason to do it. But it's a habit that I have just not been able to break, just comparing myself with other people. And that's a tremendous source of discouragement for me on a regular basis. Criticism can also lead to discouragement. If you've gotten um, a lot of criticism over a short time period, if you've gotten a number of negative comments, remember last week we talked about feedback, if you've gotten a lot of negative feedback, um, that can really get you down. You can kind of feel picked on and think, well, you know, why am I even doing this? And then there's the discouragement that comes from not getting the results that you're hoping for. You, you blog and you blog and you post and you post and you do those videos and you're doing everything you need to be doing and you're just not getting results. And, you know, we're getting back to the fact that this is a marathon and it can take up to a year before you really start getting some serious traction on your content. And those, those in-between times, it's really, really hard to stay motivated. 
So if those results are not where you want them to be at any given point, it is so easy to get discouraged and to wonder just, well, what's the point of all this that I'm doing, all this effort that I'm putting forth? So that's what I'm talking about when I refer to discouragement. Okay, now that I've got everyone thoroughly depressed, and and by the way, thank you for sticking with me through all this, I want to talk about some solutions, some strategies that we can all use for dealing with these low points that can help us stay on course. The first solution I want to talk about is recognize that it's normal. Fatigue and discouragement are things that we all deal with. Anyone who has ever created anything on a regular basis um, experiences fatigue and discouragement now and then. And anyone who says they never do are either lying or in deep denial because it's it, it just happens. It's part of life as a creative. And neither is it something that we grow out of. It's not like you get to a certain point in your success journey and you don't have to deal with this anymore. It occurs at absolutely every level. So I I think it really helps to recognize that it it is normal and it is something that everybody goes through no matter how long they've been doing this or how good they've gotten at it. Um, so it's not just it's not just us. It's not just you and it's not just me. So, you know, that kind of helps just knowing that it's normal. The second solution that I want to talk about is leaning on your support system. It is so important, especially if you're a solo act, if you're doing this all by yourself. It is so important to have people that you can lean on and that you can call and say, can I talk to you? I, I just feel like the biggest fake in the world today and and just kind of go on about that. And, you know, it's great to have people in that circle who you can you can rely on each other. You know, you can be there for them when they hit their low points because, you know, we're human beings and we and we all need each other. So, um, you know, find find safe people who you can really be yourself around and really kind of talk through those low points and and not necessarily people who can cheer you up, but just people who can you know, just kind of say it's going to be okay and um, who can just hear you out uh, can be a tremendous help when you're dealing through these low points. Solution three, try keeping a journal. And this is something that I do on a daily basis. And it really, really helps, um, especially when you're dealing with things like fatigue and discouragement. If you can just get down on paper what you're feeling and why you, why you think you're feeling this way, it, it kind of, for me... It puts the genie in the bottle. You know, while those those emotions are just swirling around in your head, they just seem so big. But when you get them down on paper, it's like, oh, okay, this is it. This is what I'm dealing with. And it kind of, for me, it helps keep things in perspective just to grab a notebook or, or a random piece of paper and just, just start writing. Start writing what's in your mind and what's holding you back and what your, um, what your feelings are, what your fears are, and just kind of get it down on paper. And and, you know, I keep journals on a on a regular basis, and I never go back and read what I've written. I think it's the important part is just getting it down and kind of working through that process can be very, very cathartic and very liberating. Solution four, we need to know in our heart of hearts that everything we do matters, that every blog post that we put out there, every post in social media, everything is contributing to the greater work that we're doing, that that opus of content marketing that we're putting out there. And to illustrate that, I want to share one of my favorite stories. It's, it's kind of a parable. So um, a man was, was visiting a town and came across a construction site where there were three masons, and each of them was chipping away at a huge hunk of concrete. And he, the man went up to the first mason, and he said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm hammering at this stupid rock. I've been at it all day. It's hot out here and miserable. And I just can't wait till five o'clock when I can go home to my family and just be done with this for another day. The man walks on to the second mason and he says, well, I'm molding this block of rock so that it can be used with others to construct a wall. Um, It's not bad work. You know, it's pretty, pretty, they pay me pretty well, but, you know, I'll, I'll be glad when it's done. And then he walks over to the third mason and says, again, what are you doing? And the man backs up and looks at his work just beaming with pride. And he says, I am building a cathedral. 
And I love that story. I read it for the first time years ago, and I love it because it's it's all in your perspective. And no matter how mundane or how hard it is to get going in whatever it is that you're doing, just remember it all matters, and it's all part of the big picture, and it will all pay off even if you're in those tough early stages. Um, you're building something that will really be, be amazingly meaningful and um, – it's going to mean something in the future. Solution number five, and this is this is especially useful for dealing with fatigue, is appreciate the differences. So a lot of times we feel like we're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And to illustrate what I mean by that, I want to tell a story. Back when I was in college, I hung – my freshman year of college anyway, I did a lot of hanging around the drama department because I fancied myself a budding actress. Um, and that's another story for another day. But my second semester, we had a visiting professor. So uh, this gentleman was a professional actor, and he spent a semester at the university teaching some courses and some master classes and also appearing in our, in our spring production. And um, I took his classes and – he and I actually wound up being friends. And I asked him one day, I said, Larry, how do you keep it fresh? I mean, how do you walk onto the same stage, say the same lines, go through the same blocking night after night after night and, and keep it fresh? Because this man had done Broadway and off-Broadway, so he had done shows that had gone on for years and years. And he had a wonderful response to that. He said, Rachel, the thing you need to remember is that it never is the same. He says, every audience is different. Every um, every night is different. Some nights, you know, a prop might be an inch further away from me than it is normally. Or uh, the temperature in the theater might be five degrees warmer or cooler. Or uh, he says, sometimes an actress and I will be doing a scene that we've done a hundred times before. And she waits half a beat longer before saying a line. And it takes the whole scene to a different place. And he said, if I can just appreciate those differences, I don't have to do anything to keep it fresh. It is fresh day after day and night after night after night and performance after performance. And I thought that was just a beautiful and elegant way of looking at something that on the surface appears to be the same thing over and over again. And I really think that we can, as content marketers, we can take that to heart as well. Just keep in mind that every single blog post is going out to a slightly different audience. And there will be people who have been there with you from the beginning. There will be people who have been reading your stuff for the last couple of weeks. There will be brand new people who happen to find you via search engine. So you're always talking to different people. Every um, every social media post, every podcast is going out into a different environment. What's going on in the world is different every time our content goes out there. So I think if we can appreciate those differences as we're we're sitting down to work, then that can really help in um, in changing our perspective and maybe uh, kind of hitting the refresh button on on our attitude toward what we're doing and what we're what we're thinking. Solution number six: you know you can always take a break from what you're doing. If that fatigue just will not go away, you can take a break. You can you can take a month off your blog. You can take a few weeks off of your your weekly e-newsletter. And there are some best practices that you want to follow when you do that, and that's another topic for another podcast. But um you know, especially if you are a solo act doing this all by yourself, you can absolutely take a break and kind of recharge the batteries and, um, and enjoy a little R&R and uh, come back to it later. Come back to it fresh. Solution number seven is something that I do for myself that I learned from Todd Henry, actually, next week's interview guest, um, Todd Henry of the Accidental Creative, and that is to create something just for the sake of creating. So just, you, you know, write a blog post that you would never publish or um, create some kooky podcast that would never go out there that you're just, you're just kind of having fun. And, you know, for me, I started doing something recently 
recently, my husband and I have gotten into a sous vide cooking, and it's something that you might have seen on the Food Network, cooking with a sous vide machine. And we've been having a great deal of fun with it, and I've actually started producing some videos on my YouTube channel that show our adventures in sous vide cooking, and the thing, different things we're cooking, and how we do it, and how it turns out. And it's been it's been tremendously refreshing to do something that's just kind of for the fun of it. I'm not worried about the keywords I'm using. I'm not worried about any kind of branding, um, anything like that. And it's just creating for the sake of creating. And it seems counterintuitive that, you know, fatigue and discouragement, that the remedy for that could be more work, <laughs> you know, working on something that's, that's purely recreational. But it really does, for me at least, it does kind of help hit that refresh button and help me take a fresh attitude towards what I do for, for my work on a, on a regular basis. But with the videos that I do for my, for my business or my blog posts and things like like that. So that's something you might want to try as well. And the eighth and final solution that I want to talk about is having your emergency kit. So a lot of buildings have a have a box on the wall that says break glass in case of emergency. And you need to have your emergency kit as well. And by that, I mean, having a source of motivation or inspiration that you can get to at any time at you know, three o'clock in the morning or whenever it is you need it. And that could be, it could be a song, it could be a movie that inspires you. It could be a Bible verse. It could be a poem. Just something that that gives you that boost, that gives you that boost of energy and motivation and helps you to keep going. Um, for me, I have a playlist on my um, on my computer and on my iPhone that I call my power pack. And those are, it's just a random collection of songs that inspire me. And the genres range from classical to hip hop. There's no rhyme or reason to what I have in there. And the only thing these tunes have in common is that they inspire me. And it, the, my favorite song, my number one pump me up motivational song and by the way nerd alert coming up is a song called non nobis domine if you've ever seen kenneth branagh's film of henry v there's a song that plays at the end of the battle of agincourt while he's trudging across the battlefield to accept the french surrender and it's an amazing song it starts with a single voice and then it swells to this amazing chorus um and this 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 big finish at the end and Man, when I hear that, I am just ready to take on the world. Um, so, so see, see what see what is that that inspires you, and have that handy. Whether it's like I said, whether it's a movie, maybe a great sports movie like you know Rudy or or the Miracle, the movie about the U.S. hockey team, or um, maybe a biography of a person who you find inspiring, or maybe a YouTube video. I know I've been known to play the <laughs> the Susan Boyle um, YouTube. Video video um, more than once to, to get inspired and just keep that handy. And um, again, this is another one of those things, especially if you're a solo act, if you are doing this all by yourself, you really need to work on having those resources available to you when you need it, because it is a long and lonely road. And you could be up at three o'clock in the morning, having finished your client work for the day. And how it's like, Oh, my God, I have to work on my blog and just really need a boost to get motivated to to work on that. So and it, it doesn't have to go any further. It could just be your little secret. Nobody has to know about this, you know, whether it, you don't have to feel stupid pulling up your favorite song to get motivated. But, um, but it can definitely help. I know it helps me. So those are some ideas that I have for dealing with fatigue and discouragement. I hope it helps. If you have any questions about anything or if you have something to add to the list, um, let me know. I would love to hear that. And I will give that contact information at the end of the podcast. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. <music> So we've done a lot of talking about right brain issues on today's podcast. So for the tip of the week, I want to talk about something very left brain, which is keeping your content organized. We've talked several times on this podcast about the importance of an editorial calendar and having all that content planned out. And, you know, when you have more than one content vehicle, if you're doing a blog and a podcast and an e-newsletter and several different things, it can get really confusing to try and coordinate all that. So 
I wanted to share with you something that I did on my blog back in August. And what I did is I created a little video tutorial showing the system that I've created for myself for keeping my content straight on those various vehicles. Um, as you may know, in, in addition to the Content Marketing Podcast, I maintain a weekly blog. I do a weekly tip e-newsletter, plus I publish content on some other sites on a regular basis. So I've created, it's a simple spreadsheet, and I keep it on Google Docs so I can access it from anywhere and edit it from anywhere. And I have a tab for the calendars, the list of things I have going on for the month, and then a tab for each vehicle, and it kind of all... It, everything feeds into each other so that I can keep it pretty simple. I don't have to double enter things. So it works well for me. And whether, rather than trying to describe it for you, I'm going to refer you to my little video tutorial so you can see for yourself and uh, see if you can get some ideas for you. I will share the link to it in the blog post for this podcast, but you can also go to bit.ly slash organize content. And that is all lowercase, all one word, bit.ly slash organize content. And that will take you to the blog post with that video tutorial. And again, this is a system I've created for myself. I've kind of patched it together. It works really well for me. So if you'd like to borrow parts of it or even borrow all of it, if you think it would work for you, please feel free to use it. <music> Okay, campers, that is it for me this week. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. If you like what you've heard today, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or via our RSS feed. And if you really, really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. I would so, so appreciate it. For more information about content marketing, you're welcome to visit our blog at resonancecontent.com slash blog, where you'll also find links to our pages on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and other social networks. If you'd like to email me a question to cover in our tip of the week, you can contact me anytime at rachel at resonancecontent.com. And if you'd like for me to come speak about content marketing to your business or your organization, you can find information about my most current talk at contentmarketingspeaker.net. As always, I like to leave you with a quote, and today's is from one of my favorite historical figures, and that is Sir Winston Churchill. He once said, success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing, and we will see you again next week. Take care. <music>